Thanks for checking out my video. This is number five in the series. Uh, by request, we're talking about the minor two five one. This one goes out to you, Tom. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, we were playing a two five one in the key of C in the introduction here, and we'll break it down slowly and talk about the chords and uh, talk about uh, um, different ways of playing through the changes. So let's get started. Okay, here we are, lesson five, talking about the minor two five one. So, uh, as I said in the introduction, uh, I'm playing this two five one in the key of C minor, and uh, so that would include a D minor seven flat five, G seven. Most of the time, it's got some kind of altered note. In this case. I'm playing G7, and I have um, a raised fifth or a flat 13. And if I played that chord all the way out to the first string, then I have a flat nine on that chord as well. It's pretty common to play, uh, to alter the five chord in a minor two, five, one like that. And then we're resolving to C minor seven, uh, we could resolve to a C minor six. That's kind of a nice sound. Um, for some other lesson, we'll talk a little bit why that that uh, is a nice chord to, to play when you're when you're uh, accompanying someone. But uh, for our purposes right now, there's a there's a nice way to voice a two five one, and then I'll show you another way. Further up the neck, here's a. This is D minor seven flat five, and I'm not sure if you can see that, but I, I have tenth fret, tenth fret, tenth fret on the sixth, fourth, and third strings, and then I'm on the ninth fret on the second string. Whoops. Five. And then my G seven chord. Flat nine, and what I'm doing here is I'm barring at the ninth fret. Um, I'm actually playing the fifth string, tenth fret. Fourth string is at the ninth. Third string is at the tenth. Second string is at the ninth fret. Nice voicing for a, a G seven flat nine, and then I'm resolving to C minor seven, or I could resolve to C minor six. quick note about um, about playing chord voicings if I'm playing in a situation where I, I, I have a bass player I typically don't play the the root notes of the chords uh, so and that's a nice sound you see what I did there just play the same exact voicings um, that I just showed you but without the bass note Okay, so uh, to get to the point here, to talk about soloing over the tune, it's really no mystery uh, what we're going to use to solo over the one chord. It's uh, some kind of C minor sound. Um, I love uh, Pat Martino and Wes Montgomery and George Benson, so I'm, I'm partial to uh, the Dorian mode. 
-hmm. although those guys wouldn't use that term, uh, which essentially would be C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, C again. Um, I can't help but put the blue note in here, which would be F sharp or G flat. I also like this sound, which is the natural seven against this this chord. Um, it's not a, a note that I would necessarily sit on and just hang out there, but it really creates some nice tension um, when we want to draw somebody's ear back to the root note. tone that's a great sound or, anyway all of the above sounds great the trickiest part for my students are the two and the five and um, I think the, f the easiest way to attack this sound is to just take a look at the chord voicings themselves and see what's hidden inside there when we look at D minor 7 if we were to take the bass note off this chord, what we have here is an F minor triad. We have A flat, which would be the minor third of, of an F minor chord. We've got the fifth, and then we have the root, right? So with a D in this chord, this chord could be F minor 6 and in fact I play that chord I play an F minor 6 like this quite a bit well if we know that that's F minor we can easily play an F minor sound right here right and all those guys that uh, play a lot of Chicago blues I love that stuff that sound is going to work perfectly over this chord. Okay, that's another another uh, way of playing it here. F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat, F. Right. Okay, so much takes care of the two chord so when we move on to five again we'll just go through the same process let's take the root note off the five chord if we take the root note off the five chord and we just look at the, the top part of that voicing what we find is that we're actually playing an F minor seven with a flatted fifth right here's F here's the flatted fifth the flat seven and the flat third. So here we have an F minor six to an F minor seven flat five. It's got a natural nine in there, right? As the bass note. I mean, really, if we if we forget about the bass notes, we got an F minor to F minor to C minor, right? So that's in fact, what I'm going to play when I solo over these these two chords, okay? Now, there are a couple of interior lines that that will really help you out. For instance, this F minor uh, has C natural in it. F minor 7 with a flatted fifth has C flat. So if you were so inclined, you could, you don't have to, but you could move this note from the D chord down a half step when you hear the chord progression move to the G7 chord and you have a real nice interior line going on so here's our chord progression
again. Uh, wasn't exactly the same, but close enough. Right? right, so I'm what I'm doing is I'm cueing around this idea. Minor seven flat five, C flat. I, heck, I could move it all the way down to the B flat. That would be nice. I'll do that again. Right. So that time I. So we had this nice interior line going. All right. There are other, there are a couple other points of resolution that I want to point out. One is the note A flat. On the C minor seven chord, I'm actually going to play an A natural. So A flat doesn't really figure into this chord, but A flat is minor 7 flat 5 and it's also in the altered G. So sometimes what I'll do is cue off of that note and then resolve this note down a half step to the C chord, right? again with this A flat resolving to G which is the fifth of C minor right so with the same same issue F minor sounds going to C so right um, probably my all-time favorite jazz guitar player is Grant Green and I you know he would often play something like this right and that's just F minor concept is that two and five can be looked at just as an F minor sound. And as I mentioned before when I was talking about the, the Dorian mode, if you want to call it that, um, I don't call it that because I add some extra notes in there. Um, but for me, you know, this minor, this minor thing, this minor scale now, F minor, would have F, G, A flat, B flat, B natural in it because I love that blues note. And that works beautifully with that, that altered uh, G chord. C, D, E flat, F, right? So, so for me, I'm, I'm using only two scales, and two familiar ones too, C minor. Right. And it sounds great. It's, 
especially when you have really nice blues phrasing in there and you're using that F minor in that way against these chords. Um, it's really a fantastic sound. Uh, just a last, the last point is that um, there's a beautiful thing that happens with the minor blues thing um, in that we could play the minor blues sound over the whole turnaround and that's a great sound as well. Um, and you know it's just something that that we've been hearing for the last hundred years that it sounds so great but sound it's just that this F minor thing gets more at the heart of this idea that two and five are um, in transition they're volatile chords that are moving towards home base which is one and so by treating them differently by looking at these the two and five as an entity unto themselves and therefore playing um, that F minor sound, you're really getting at the function of the of the of the song or that chord progression, which is, you know, the dominant function. You know, two chords that are in motion and then a resolution. So F minor to C minor. Um, that's pretty much my my lesson for today. Again, if you have any questions about the lessons, please feel free. Uh, to contact me, go to www.belltowertrio.com and uh, I'd be more than happy to, to um, answer any questions you might have. Thanks again and good luck.